Excitement is building for Vision Pro, the mixed reality headset is currently in the pre-order phase and will be available in Apple stores in the US on February 2nd. While we haven't seen it in person, leaks and statements are revealing new details about the product. Recently, it was mentioned that the headset will be heavier than expected. Now, a massive retail box has emerged, likely accompanying the Apple Vision Pro, hinting at significant features. Apple recently unveiled the box for their much-anticipated mixed-reality headset in a training video for Apple employees. The box adheres to Apple's signature minimalist design, it showcases the front face of the Vision Pro headset at the top, accompanied by the gray text Vision Pro along the long edges. Upon opening the box, you'll find the headset, two adjustable headbands in different sizes, and a soft fabric light-blocking face mask. The Vision Pro box appears to be crafted with the device's contents and delicate structure in mind. Apple has a history of unveiling their advanced products in sizable boxes. Nevertheless, they later shifted towards sustainability, adopting a more minimalist approach to reduce carbon footprint by downsizing the packaging. While the box's design might not be thrilling, Vision Pro's innovative features have captured users' attention. Recently, Apple made pre-orders available for its highly anticipated Vision Pro, while the price is certainly high-end, that didn't stop thousands of people pre-ordering the device. Analysts have estimated that Apple sold between 160,000 to 180,000 Vision Pro units, a truly astonishing number considering the headset is priced at $3,500 and $4,000 with extras. While Apple is undoubtedly very happy with the number of pre-orders for its first-generation device, the company probably has only 60,000 to 80,000 units in stock at launch on February 2nd. The demand for the Vision Pro has resulted in delayed shipping times, with customers now being informed they will have to wait between 5 and 7 weeks to receive their order, while in-store pickup will also unavailable. Analysts believe that Apple will be able to reach 500,000 units in 2024, but after those orders are filled, Vision Pro demand will begin to taper off. Apple is currently involved in legal battles with the Apple Watch and its blood oxygen sensors, which allegedly violate patents owned by Massimo. Apple opted to temporarily stop selling the affected Apple Watch models instead of paying a settlement, but thanks to a recent court order, sales have resumed. That was a temporary fix however, and to continue sales going forward, Apple would have to take actual measures and changes. It looks like the change being readied might see the removal of one specific feature off the watch. Apple is preparing a permanent fix to end its legal woes and make sure it can continue selling the Apple Watch over the course of the next few months. As per a legal filing, the fix would involve permanently disabling the pulse oximetry feature through software, which currently remains included in the models available for sale. This solution would be dependent in Apple losing the appeal and legal battle against Massimo, if the court rules in Apple's favor, the proposed software fix may not be implemented. The pulse oximetry feature, first introduced in 2020 with the Apple Watch Series 6, measures blood oxygen levels. However, Apple has never marketed it for medical use, positioning it as one of the Apple Watch's many wellness features. Apple's implementation has been frequently criticized for its accuracy, or lack thereof. It's a feature that has also landed on competing smartwatches, such as the Samsung Galaxy Watch Series. The good news is that the pulse oximeter isn't really something that's being used widely these days. It was an important addition back when the COVID-19 pandemic was rampant, since one frequent and deadly symptom of COVID-19 is a sharp drop in oxygen saturation, a pulse oximeter would let you keep track of this and, if necessary, tell you whether you needed to hook yourself up to an oxygen tank. It's not a stat many people are keeping track of these days, and while Apple might see itself forced to remove it from Apple Watches in the next few months, chances are that you wouldn't have even noticed. Apple is currently navigating turbulent waters in the United Kingdom. The core of the storm? A hefty lawsuit that's putting the tech giant's App Store policies under the microscope. The lawsuit, demanding a whopping $1 billion, represents more than 1,500 app developers who believe they've been wronged by Apple's fee structure. 
Here's the crux of the issue. These developers argue that Apple's commission fees, which can be as high as 30% on app purchases, are unfair. They feel Apple is using its strong market position and overcharging them for the privilege of being on the App Store. This is a significant concern because, for many developers, being on the Apple App Store isn't just a choice, it's a necessity to reach a broad audience. But Apple isn't taking this lying down. Their defense hinges on an interesting point. Most of their developers, about 85%, don't pay any commission. This is because these developers offer free apps or apps that don't have in-app purchases. Apple's lawyers are pushing hard to dismiss the case, arguing that it's baseless and that claims can only be made by those who are charged via the UK App Store. The case, filed at the Competition Appeal Tribunal in London, isn't just a standalone battle. It's part of a broader narrative where Apple is facing several legal challenges over its App Store practices. This includes another massive lawsuit involving around 20 million UK users over App Store commissions and a separate case about iPhone batteries. What does this mean for Apple and app developers? It's a complex dance of power, legalities, and market dynamics. For Apple, it's about defending its business model and practices, which have been a cornerstone of its success. For the developers, it's a fight for fairer terms and a more level playing field. As these cases progress, they won't just impact the involved parties, they could reshape how tech giants operate and interact with smaller players in the industry. With trials not expected until 2025, the tech world watches and waits to see how this legal drama unfolds. Apple has taken over Samsung to become the top smartphone supplier in the world for the first time. Apple shipped 234.6 million smartphones in 2023, compared to Samsung's 226.6 million. Xiaomi is in third place with 145.9 million shipped. Apple surged into number one spot thanks to an extremely successful final quarter of 2023, in which it shipped 80.5 million smartphones, compared to Samsung's 53 million and Xiaomi's 40.7 million. Apple was also the only smartphone maker in the top three to achieve growth this year. Apple's results show resilience for the company's smartphone business, as they were achieved against a fairly poor macroeconomic backdrop in which overall smartphone shipments declined 3.2% year-over-year. This is largely due to Apple's rapid growth in the emerging markets, as well as the increasing trend of premium devices, which now represent over 20% of the market, fueled by aggressive trade-in offers and interest-free financing plans. Despite being among the largest smartphone manufacturers for over a decade, Apple has never been in the top spot on a yearly basis. The company entered the race when it launched the iPhone back in 2007, when the top smartphone manufacturer globally was Nokia. Since then, Samsung spent most of the time in the first place, with Apple battling the likes of Huawei and Xiaomi for the number two spot.